How can we paint someone's true portrait? We very often start with official sources, looking for their notable achievements, the positions they held in public life, or the works they published. For Robert Wyndham Ketton Creamer, the last squire of Felbrig, these sources reveal a life of public duty, a justice of the peace, high sheriff of Norfolk, a respected and much-loved local patron, a celebrated biographer and scholar. They reveal a shy, generous, unmarried man who restored his exquisite ancestral home and bequeathed it to the nation. But is our portrait complete? Official accounts of Robert's life tend to offer only a partial story and neglect to incorporate what was widely accepted by those who knew him. Some adopt a language of codes and suggestions, describing him as the bachelor squire, or not one for the ladies. But the truth is, when researching Robert's life, we find many accounts that openly acknowledge his homosexuality, adding, of course, that to be gay when he lived could lead to prosecution under the law. Researching Robert's life highlights the problems we encounter when looking back at the lives of people who defied the conventions of their day. If we ask questions about these individuals' personal lives, we often find that records have been destroyed. We find deafening silences and awkward euphemisms that reflect and perpetuate the pernicious attitudes of the times in which they lived. What fine detail, then, can we add to our portrait of this remarkable man to help us build a full, fair and respectful likeness? We can add that he had a free and expressive life before duty and obligation took hold. At Oxford in the 1920s, Robert's deeply felt poetry was published alongside the work of his contemporaries, Christopher Isherwood, Harold Acton, Graham Greene and W. H. Auden. We can add that Robert had an instinctive understanding of human nature. In his acclaimed biographies of Horace Walpole and Thomas Gray, he didn't shy away from his subjects' same-sex desires. He acknowledged the challenges they faced, chronicling their lives with honesty and compassion. Far from the sad sense of his being the last name on the last branch of his family tree, we can add that Robert was rooted physically, intellectually and socially in his beloved Norfolk. He was admired and befriended by creative, unconventional people. His private books overflow with personal dedications and intimate notes from Stevie Smith, A. L. Rouse and Anthony Pohl, among others. But his portrait isn't complete without considering his greatest legacy. Aged just thirty-five, Robert's resolution to leave Felbrick Hall to the National Trust came soon after learning of his younger brother's tragic death in 1941. Robert's decision was made in the knowledge that he himself would never marry and that there would be no heirs. Finally, we must add that among a pile of Robert's books lies a small blue government report published in 1957. On its spine, Robert has written its unofficial title, The Wolfenden Report. Its recommendations to decriminalise homosexual acts did not become law until 1967, two years before Robert's death. What would our subject have made of the changes it heralded? and the lives it has helped to liberate. Fifty years on, beyond the language of clues, hints and broad brushstrokes, today we must celebrate our LGBTQ histories in plain sight. To do anything less is to suggest that same-sex love and gender diversity are somehow wrong, and lets past prejudice and discrimination go unchallenged. As a tolerant, generous and honest biographer himself, this fuller portrait of Robert is perhaps one that he would recognise and appreciate.
As a pigeon, startled up from under trees, scattering leaves with the stir of its rising, goes blundering through the shifting sunlight and flies slanting up, seeking the open skies, then batters its wings through yielding twigs and sees the waving green of the woods recede and knows its power and loves higher and higher to rise its breast and wings by the sun flushed golden and rose. So a thought of you rises up with keen swift flight out of the prisoning thickets into the light, forgetting a little while all doubt, all pain, thinking never to pause and descend again to the cold, perilous earth and the dark of night, up into measureless heavens the wild wings strain.